Zhuwei Food, a Chinese chain food company, released a report showing that the company's shrinking store scale has had a lasting impact on its revenue. In the first half of this year, Zhuwei Food's stores decreased by 981, and most of its revenue from the braised food industry came from offline stores. Additionally, the company's multiple overseas investment projects also suffered huge losses. According to reports from Jimian News and Red Star News, on the evening of October 24th, Zhuwei Food released its 2024 third quarter report. In the third quarter of this year, the company's main business revenue was 1.675 billion yuan, RMB, the same below, a year-on-year -year decrease of 13.29%. The net profit attributable to the parent company was 143 million yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 3.33%. Jiwei Foods shrinking store scale has had a lasting impact on its revenue. Most of the revenue in the braised food industry comes from offline stores, but in the first half of this year, Jue Foods' revenue was 3.34 billion yuan, a year-on-year -year decrease of 9.73%, and the number of stores decreased by 981. Data from Frost & Sullivan and the Red Food Industry Research Institute show that the growth rate of the marinated products industry has slowed down significantly. In the first half of 2024, although the price of raw materials has dropped year on year, the industry as a whole faces severe operating pressure, and leading companies are also facing survival challenges. On the evening of October 21st, Jiawei Foods issued the Reply Announcement on the Shanghai Stock Exchange's Information Disclosure Supervision Work Letter. Due to long-term investment losses, Jiwei Foods was once again required by the Shanghai Stock Exchange to disclose investment-related data. Since 2017, Jiwei Foods has invested in joint ventures with Tomato Capital, New Hope, and others through its wholly-owned subsidiary Shenzhen Wangju, focusing on marinated food, condiments, supply chain, and other related industries. However, most of the company's overseas investments have become a drag. From 2022 to the first half of 2024, the company's cash payments for investment were 880 million yuan, 2.422 billion yuan, and 1.063 billion yuan respectively. And the investment income was negative, 94.2185 million yuan, negative 116 million yuan, and negative 3.252 million yuan, respectively, with a total loss of 213 million yuan. In foreign investment, Jiwei Foods investment targets are mainly in four categories, stewed food, light catering, condiments, and upstream and downstream of the industrial chain. However, Jiwei Foods investment expectations for stewed food have not been met. In 2023, the five targets of Jue Foods equity investment had a total loss of 105 million yuan. In the first half of 2024, Jiuwei invested in Jiangsu Mangguan and Changsha Nayun, and the brands associated with the two companies also suffered huge losses. No more money. A county-level city in Hunan announced it had laid off 300 government contract workers. The financial difficulties of the Communist Party at all levels are expanding, and reports of dismissing non-staff personnel have surfaced in many places. Among them, Shaodong City in Hunan province claimed to have dismissed more than 300 people, saving over 20 million yuan, which has sparked doubts. On October 26th, according to the paper, Hunan provincial authorities claimed that to save fiscal expenditures, strictly control establishment management, live a tight life, vigorously reduce the scale of non-staff employment, and dismiss non-staff personnel. Shaodong City has dismissed more than 300 non-staff workers, saving over 20 million yuan in fiscal funds. According to the report, the county-level city has transferred the responsibilities of the Rural Revitalization Bureau to the Agricultural and Rural Bureau, abolished three departments, Natural Resources, Labor and Social Security, and Water Administration, and established two new departments, the Municipal Party Committee Social Work Department and the Municipal Data Bureau. The number of deliberative and coordinating agencies has been reduced from 172 to 20, 
a streamlining of 88.4%. In recent years, the finances of various regions of the Communist Party of China have fallen into difficulty, and localities have tried various methods to ease their burdens. Many places have released data on the withdrawal of non-staff personnel. In September this year, Ningyuan County, Yongzhou City, Hunan Province, reported that 637 non-staff personnel were cleared and withdrawn, saving 14.6 million yuan in fiscal funds. In September 2023, Linli County, Changde City, Hunan Province, said it promoted the management of non-staff employment, and a total of 163 non-staff workers were withdrawn, saving 2 million yuan in fiscal funds. In April 2023, Xi'an City, Hubei Province, reported that the municipal non-staff employment units involved 67 competent departments, 177 units, and 3,400 non-staff employees. Through cleanup efforts, 326 positions were reduced compared to the same period last year, saving about 15 million yuan in fiscal costs. Additionally, some local authorities turned former public institutions into enterprises. For example, in August, Shandong Province issued a directive to transform public institutions into enterprises, requiring public institutions to formally terminate personnel relations with established staff. In response, netizens commented, In Shaodong, Hunan, an obscure place, the official agency dismissed more than 300 people, saving over 20 million yuan a year. The whole country should do the same and save hundreds of billions of funds. There really isn't enough money to pay wages, so non-staff personnel are being dismissed to reduce financial pressure. This should be done nationwide. 300 people, 20 million, a year? I always wonder why there are so many non-staff personnel. Is the staffing number unreasonable, or are the staff members below not doing their work? Some netizens criticized, it's the useless personnel who should be dismissed, not non-staff personnel. The payroll staff should be dismissed, while the non-staff should be retained. The payroll staff are just idling around and can't do anything. It's not a non-staff issue. It's the people who work less or don't work who are occupying positions and taking the money. The real workers deserve the money. Why don't you investigate these issues on the payroll? Why don't you cut the civil servants at the top to reduce the burden and improve efficiency? Who will take responsibility for the past waste? Staffing is a unique privilege phenomenon under the CCP's totalitarian system. CCP officials and civil servants at all levels enjoy privileges according to their ranks, including the so-called public institution staff who are on the payroll. CCP departments at all levels recruit some people from society to assist with work, but they do not enjoy the privileges of system staff and are called non-staff staff. As the CCP's finances at all levels are in trouble, the first individuals to be dismissed are these non-staff staff. Shanghai is in crisis. 1,056,000 restaurants closed in the worst first half of the year. If you've ever been to China, you might remember that restaurants are everywhere. But that is no longer the case today. According to data from Tianyan Track, a Chinese business and commercial information query platform, 1.056 million Chinese catering-related companies closed in the first half of this year. The large-scale closure of restaurants began in 2023, with 1.359 million closures that year. From January to June 2024, in just six months, this data is close to last year's total. Let's first take a look at the videos uploaded by several bloggers on social media showing the current situation of restaurant closures in cities such as Shanghai and Kunming. Now opening a store is like giving away money. This is the center of downtown Shanghai, no, one Wai Hai Road. Come and feel the current business environment. I ran from the first floor to the third floor, and there were more than two stores on each floor that had closed down. At this time last year, this place was still fully rented. It's only been less than a year. What do you think? In the first half of this year, 1.056 million restaurants closed down, which is close to the total number of last year. 
The situation is not optimistic. This is a catering street in the county town. It used to be very crowded. Let's take a look at the shops here. Lease, rent, transfer, landlord direct lease, Shandong barbecue transfer, vegetable supermarket transfer and lease. This place is also selling electric cars. The vacant room at the corner of the intersection is rented at a low price. It is very difficult to do the catering business in Linshui this year. I have run a porridge shop at the location of Turtle Monument in Linshui for seven years, and I have never seen such a fierce wave of closures this year. To be honest, the Rujiamo restaurant opposite, his Rujiamo is delicious. We often buy it to eat, but it finally closed down and I don't know why. The braised pork rice in the Cantonese restaurant is selling well, and we also like it, but it finally closed down. What do you think is going on? Look at the Maokai restaurant that is also closed down. The photo studio is no longer in business, and there is also this store. The stores over there have all closed down. When can these stores be rented out? Another Chinese blogger named Stall King posted a video on July 17, introducing the current situation of the largest new city center in Kunming, Yan'an province. He said that the vacancy rate of closed stores in the entire shopping mall has reached 85%. July, August, and September are the peak seasons for catering. But can this year's peak season be prosperous? If you are in the catering business, you will succeed in one fell swoop if you don't lose money this year. If you can still make a little profit, congratulations, you have already beaten 50% of your peers. Just halfway through this year, 1.05 million restaurants have closed down, close to the total of last year. Many new and inexperienced restaurants closed down in two or three months, losing hundreds of thousands of dollars at lightning speed. Among them, hot pot restaurants are the hardest hit. In the first half of the year, 22,000 stores were registered, of which 26,000 closed down, and more than 4,000 stores lost money. Behind me is the largest business district in Kunming, known as the new center of the city, with an annual passenger flow of about 13 million. Let's take a look at such a large business district. For physical merchants, how is the current situation? Let's take a look together. They're closed down, closed down, closed down, barbecue, hot pot. This whole large area is about 300 square meters. They used to be connected together, but now they are all closed down. This row of them are all closed down, Chaoshan beef, and this one are closed down. The closure rate of the entire mall has reached 85%. There is almost no business. Many friends said that if it is not Saturday, there will definitely be no people. Even if there is less traffic on Wednesday and Thursday, it will not affect its closure. You may say that there is not much traffic on weekdays, but it is now in a state of closure. In such a mall, only big brands such as Heidelau may survive. The economy is in serious recession in the mainland. This situation may become more serious this year. In the second half of 2024, and in 2025. There are many cases where restaurants invested millions of RMB but closed down within three months. The following video shows the boss talking about his feelings after the failure of his restaurant. He said that he would never do catering again. This is a barbecue restaurant where I invested 1 million RMB, which is dollar 138,000 US dollars. Unfortunately, it closed down in less than three months. Many people advised me not to open this skewer's restaurant, but I chose to open it without hesitation. I only saw others making a lot of money and never thought that it would fail. At that time, the rent for this restaurant cost nearly 200,000 RMB, which is dollar $28,000 US dollars. The decoration and equipment cost hundreds of thousands of RMB. I dreamed every day that it would be enough to make tens of thousands of RMB a month, not to mention more. Unexpectedly, after opening, the income was not enough to cover the daily rent. The highest daily turnover was 2,000 RMB, which is less than $275 US dollars. I hired more than a dozen employees and waited three months to resell it, but no one was willing to take it over for a long time. Today, it finally ended. Looking at all this, I told myself that I would never do catering again. Why did a large number of restaurants close down? 
Ms. Liu, a resident of Shandong, said in an interview with Radio Free Asia not long ago that because residents could not find jobs and lost their source of income, they lived frugally. All walks of life are in recession. The prospects are not particularly good now. Ordinary people dare not spend money in order to cope with the situation that they have no choice. Therefore, the consumption pattern of ordinary people has changed. They cannot see hope or the future, but they have to maintain normal expenses. When spending money, they must first make comparisons and secondly, make budgets, such as for children's education, living expenses, and medical costs for themselves or the elderly. The depression of the catering industry is the most direct manifestation of the reduction in income of Chinese residents. Whether ordinary people go to restaurants for meals can be seen at a glance. In order to survive in this difficult environment, the Chinese catering industry has launched Poor Man's Combo. For example, the well-known Chinese fast food brand Nanjing Xiang launched a 3 yuan, or 40 cents buffet breakfast, claiming that for only 3 yuan, you can drink unlimited porridge, milk, soy milk, and other breakfast drinks. There are also restaurants that offer a two dish and one rice set meal for 14.9 yuan, or about two US dollars. Tea chain stores also offer a $1.35 bread and milk tea combination. A hot pot restaurant owner, Sister Shai, introduced in a video that her hot pot restaurant's turnover fell 50%. Sister Shai found that both old and new customers rarely patronized the store. The turnover was sometimes less than 10,000 RMB, and at 7 o'clock in the evening, the seats outside were still empty. Today's order was only four tables, and the business of the whole street was also bleak, with almost no customers in the neighboring shops.